Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Christine Hull and I will be your facilitator for unit one for the National Invitational. We have Falls Creek Junior High School in Indiana with us today. In a moment, I will have the judges introduce themselves followed by the students and then we will begin the hearing. Students will deliver a four minute prepared statement followed by eight minutes of judges questions. My microphone will be muted during the hearing and I will be holding up the one minute and time signs. I suggest that you use gallery view rather than speaker view. And at the conclusion of the hearing, judges will give brief feedback to teams and then we will conclude. Judges, you may now introduce yourselves. Okay, good morning. My name is Alan Broadman. Uh, I am a, or was a teacher. I recently retired. I was a teacher in East Brunswick, New Jersey, and I brought teams to the national competition. And my students did as wonderful enough job that they won some national championships. So I am looking forward to hearing from you guys this morning. I'm Tim. Tim Moore from the Center for the Study of the American Constitution at the University of Wisconsin. Go Badgers. And I'm Glyptus Ann Greider Jones from the University of Louisville's McConnell Center in Kentucky. Good morning. Okay. Could you please introduce yourselves to us? Yes, we are Unit 1, Fall Creek Junior High. My name is Rohan Eben. My name is Janai Hassan. My name is Misha Mulbris. My name is Arjun Tawar, and our sponsors are Mr. Bradshaw and Mrs. Medeiros. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, teachers, for being involved in this program. All right, so you guys want to know which, which question we're doing, right? Yeah, okay. So we will be doing question number one. Okay, I will read the question, and then you may begin whenever you like. What is a constitution and a constitutional government? What is Republican government? How can constitutional governments be organized to prevent the abuse of power and protect natural rights? How can higher or fundamental law be distinguished from statutory or ordinary laws that governments regularly create and enforce? You may begin. A constitution is a set of principles and structures that limits what the government can do and establishes the rights and freedoms of the people. Constitutional government is a government that uses a constitution, which can be a tangible document or an agreed set of rules. Written constitutions have a little room for exceptions, while unwritten constitutions have more room for interpretation. Therefore, governments with written constitutions have stricter enforcement when it comes to fundamental law while governments without written constitutions are more lenient and dynamic. A Republican government is a government that is based on the consent of the people, has separation of powers, serves the common good, and respects the voice of minority. According to George Washington, in a free and Republican government, you cannot restrain the voice of the multitude. Washington believed that the people have sovereignty in a Republican government because they can choose who the leaders are. The United States is an example of a Republican government because people can vote and voice their opinions on how society should work. In Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution, it is written that people are guaranteed a Republican form of government. In a Republican government, the voice of the minority is respected. The government's job is to help all people, not just the majority. When Congress votes on something, say an amendment, two-thirds of Congress must be in agreement to approve it. In a direct democracy, however, it becomes a tyranny of the majority when even the smallest majority has the power to pass laws and control everything. Constitutional governments can be organized to prevent the abuse of power and protect people's rights through the separation of powers and the enumeration of those powers. In the American system, this includes a separation of powers across both the federal and state governments, as well as the individual branches. Separation of powers is when power is distributed among different branches of government instead of belonging to a single person or group. Therefore, power is regulated and limited. According to Montesquieu, if the legislative and executive authorities are one institution, there will be no freedom. There won't be freedom anyway if the judiciary body is not separated from the legislative and executive authorities. An example of this in action is when new laws are created. 
The legislative branch writes new laws, the executive branch enacts those laws, and the judicial branch revises those laws to make sure that they are fair for the people and they follow the constitution. This process called checks and balances makes sure that the amount of power between the branches is equally distributed. Therefore, laws are more likely to be fair and just and less likely to infringe on the natural rights of the people. Fundamental or higher law can be distinguished from statutory law because fundamental law is very difficult to change or expand on, while statutory law is regularly changed, created, or removed to keep up with our ever-changing society. Fundamental law can be changed through the process of creating an amendment. This process is possible but challenging and happens very rarely. Over 200 years, we've only made 27 amendments to our main form of fundamental law, the Constitution. Fundamental law dates all the way back to Hammurabi's Code in Mesopotamia. Many civilizations followed suit, creating their own set of fundamental laws. For example, a more recent form of fundamental law would be the Constitution. The Constitution is the foundation for how our country is run and therefore fundamental since and therefore fundamental since it contains the most crucial laws that keep the country in order. A current example of statutory law is the speed limit. While the speed limit is important, it is not crucial for the way the country is run. Because of this, and the fact that the speed limit changes from state to state, it is statutory law. Another example of statutory law would be parking laws. Parking laws also vary all over the country and are fundamental because of this and the fact that they can be changed easily. As different as they are, Fundamental and statutory law are important aspects of constitutional and republican government. This concludes our paper. We are now ready for your questions. Okay, thank you very much. All right. So you talked a little bit about limited government. All right, I'd like to explore that a bit more. All right, in fact, what I'd like you to do is to evaluate how good a job our system has done over the years in achieving that goal of limited government. And in fact, if you are interested, you can give them a grade, like your teacher would give you a grade on how well they've done. In my opinion, I think we've done generally a good job with limited government by having separation of powers and checks and balances. However, with the media, the executive branch is getting a lot more attention and does have more influence than the other branches. So with the growth, the federal government is growing and with the media having such a spotlight on the president, he does have a, a very strong influence. So if I were to grade our country on how we did, I would give them a solid B plus. I agree with my colleague Misha. I believe that our government does do a very good job of limiting, our, our country does a very good job of limiting the government. Another way is by giving the citizens many freedoms. These freedoms can be seen in the First Amendment, such as the freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and freedom of religion. By giving this, the citizens freedoms, they are emphasizing the natural rights philosophy and making sure that the citizens gain enough attention and their opinions are voiced. So I would give our country and government a solid A minus. I personally agree with both my colleagues, Rohan, Rohan and Misha, but we have seen that the limited government sometimes doesn't work as the executive branch has been collecting more power over the years. One example of this is the Watergate scandal. When Nixon's party tried to hotwire and collect information that they weren't supposed to on Nixon's opponent, the executive branch was a clear violation of their, the executive branch did a clear violation of their power. And I would rate the government right now a B. In addition, I believe that, um, adding on to what my colleague Misha said, I believe that the executive branch has had a, a lot more power. Um, we can see that um, in early January this year, uh, the, we had a huge incident and it was because the executive branch um, voice their opinion and it caused a huge controversy and so i would give the our government um a b or a b plus i'd like to ask you uh explore this idea of written and unwritten constitutions um you you made the argument um that you're a little uncomfortable with unwritten 
Um, but don't we have to interpret in um, written uh, constitutional systems? So, uh, so is it is it really that big of a distinction since both have interpretations within the system? Well, I believe that in our constitution, it is fairly vague, and this vagueness allows for more interpretation, but other constitutions can be more specific, and this allows for the constitutions to not change as society changes, as well as unwritten constitutions do, because they're based on past events. John Locke writes in his essay concerning human understanding how people in book three, how people can uh, manipulate words in their own favor. And he complains about an abuse of words. And I think with the vagueness of our written constitution, it's very, it can be easy to manipulate, which can be a good thing as it can change with social norms, but it can also be a disadvantage. Does, it, does that mean longer constitutions are better than shorter ones? I don't think a longer constitution is necessarily better than a shorter one. I think that uh, a constitution can be short, but specific and a, a constitution can be long, but vague. Uh, I disagree. I think that a longer um, constitution would be better because right now in our country, we have a little bit of a shorter constitution. And so um, it is much harder to change or add to our constitution. This can be done through the process of creating an amendment but it can be very hard and sometimes take a long time. Thank you. My question is, um, some people say that the US form of government uh, can be described as a democracy. And we're talking here about a Republican form of government. So why do you think some people would call our system of government a democracy? Why would, you, why would they use that label? And do you agree with that label? Well, I believe that some people might consider the United States form of government as a democracy because in a democracy, the people are given sovereignty, but many people do not really understand the difference between a direct democracy and a republic because in a republic, the voice of the minority is respected. And you can see this because in our Senate, you have to have a 60% and 40% vote in order to pass laws. So the voice of the minority is always heard instead of as opposed to a direct democracy where even the smallest majority has the power to make decisions. Any other thoughts? Uh, I agree with my colleague Rohan that many people might consider the United States as a democracy because people do get a voice. However, they don't realize that um, when it comes to the United States of 51%, it's, it's not enough, like 51% to 49%, then that's not enough to pass a law. And it's not a tyranny of the majority since we do res respect the rights of the minority. Is that something historically we have done to appreciate the rights of the minorities? I think that historically, um, not everybody has been able to vote, such as uh, women weren't uh, usually able to vote and African Amer Americans weren't really able to vote and it was uh, white men that had that owned property. And therefore, usually everybody would agree or think very similar, uh, would think in similar ways. And therefore there'd be a lot less problem with respecting the minority since everybody, they are all coming from different backgrounds, so they would usually agree. Well, I we have made changes. You may go ahead, Janai. Thank you, Rohan. Rohan. I personally agree that the U.S. has been trying to strive to support the minority and recognize the minority because when the Constitution first started, only white males who own property could vote. But as we strive farther and make more amendments that try to include all of these different kinds of races, all of these different kinds of people, we strive to make everybody who gets a right to vote and everybody make their voice heard. Do you think there's a higher law above the constitution? Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, again, this is, this is, 
it's becoming a problem. <laughs> yeah. And and you're the one that's holding up. And, and you're the one that's holding up the time. So who's the problem? We could answer. Great job, both. guys. Misha, <laughs> we know you can. Unfortunately, we can't let you go ahead and do that. So. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> All right, um, I'll let my some of my uh, peers jump in and give you some comments on um, your how you did today. Uh, I get well. I guess I'll start. Uh, I uh, I like the way you started out in your four minute presentation. That you know, there's this interpretation issue that factors into whether we're comfortable or uncomfortable with written, uh, unwritten constitution. So I appreciated that acknowledgement right off the bat. Uh, and then you followed up with a very succinct four point uh, definition, you know, consent, separation, uh, factoring in the common goods and considering rights of minorities. Uh, I thought that was very succinct and very clear. Um, and then the, the central part, um, of your opening statement was uh, very well organized, citing uh, principles as well as uh, historical Montesquieu. Uh, it's good to know that uh, there may be a natural right to go as fast as I want in in your in your world, which is great. I'm, I wanted to explore that possibility of whether I have a natural right to go 100 miles an hour. Um, but I, but I thought you know your use of that piece of evidence is is uh, was quite good to dis decipher between higher law and statutory law, the changeability. Uh, in the follow-ups, I thought you, you did a good job. I, your grading is, 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 is remarkable. I, uh, uh, the, the lowest we had was a B. Uh, a B. Uh, the, uh, the idea of, of uh, uh, written or unwritten in the, in the follow-ups, I, uh, I think could have been a little bit stronger, um, but it's interesting that you say you, you bring in this this Lockean notion of people can manipulate words, uh, and that's why I followed up like, well, would more words help? Would longer constitutions help in that regard? So I think you're onto something there about the manipulation uh, of words, and uh, and that's a profound that's a profound uh, statement uh, that you that you um, you seem to have digested from Locke. So I appreciated our time together, and. Uh, and good luck, good luck. I agree, I enjoyed uh, the, the flow of your opening statement. I uh, also appreciated the frequency with which you were using um, constitutional examples. I would encourage you to also continue to pull and apply those constitutional examples directly in your responses. Um, I, pulling in the Locke example, you know, Locke book three, Continue to show us where you're pulling your evidence from. Um, someone mentioned the Watergate scandal. Uh, again, continue to just use those examples and illustrate and then tie back directly, I would encourage you to the constitution. Where are you referencing? Where's the contradiction there? Um, just help us continue to show and identify that constitutional application. Uh, but again, I enjoyed um, all of you responding, all of you participating, and again, the flow of, of your presentation. So thank you for your hard work. We could tell all the effort you put into it. And I, I think you, I, I would agree with what my peers have, have talked about. I would also note that um, I thought you, you showed a strong understanding of a number of these concepts. You know, one's about concepts, okay, and ideas. And it's why I know well, for a lot of my students, it was the one they did not want to do. Um, but I happen to enjoy unit one a lot. So um, I thought you did a very nice job with that and, and it, laying out those. I would re reiterate the idea of, give me some more examples. Link the, specific, link the concepts that you clearly understand to specific examples throughout. You, you did it, I think, in a number of places, but you could have been even stronger in that connection. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, I would agree with so much of what has already been said. Thank you so much. And thank you teachers for, I'm sure the wonderful job that, that they did in bringing this all together with you. So thank you very much guys.